Um, can you please give us your name, position, and can you hear us? Can hear us, I think. Can you hear us? I can. Okay. Can you swear either an oath or an affirmation? I, I swear that the evidence now about to be given by me shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Thank you. And your full name and who you represent? Christopher Paul Andrew Brown. I represent the uh, Western Sydney Powerhouse uh, Community Alliance. Thank you. Would you like to make a short opening statement? I would first listen to apology. I'm broadcasting from home because I've got a little burst of bronchitis despite oh. massive public health issues. I managed to avoid COVID and catch bronchitis oh. during this lockdown. So my apologies if there's a slight mute for a second while I cough and spare you the, uh, uh, the glory of it all. Um, but um, delighted to be able to be part of this inquiry. Delighted to have this role as a proud son of Parramatta. Delighted that government um, has decided to finally invest in the cultural uh, facilities to spend some of the literally billions of dollars of taxes that the people of Western Sydney pay on cultural facilities from the Greater West. Um, I think we're dealing with a portfolio, the only one in all of government, where 90 plus percent of the entire spending of the arts portfolio is spent in one LGA in the inner city of Sydney. And while I'm very proud of the cultural institutions I've grown up with in my broader city, I'm even proud that some of them might now finally, finally be drifting west to where the great mass of those taxpayers in the community live. And I've hived away just for the benefit of the inner city and the suburbs. So I'm delighted that the inquiry, the parliamentary committee, is uh, shown an interest in this. I'm, uh, I'd be more delighted if its interest was, was centred largely on how we can start this as a process to get more cultural institutions, more equitable spending of arts funding, and more support from people of Greater Sydney um, in this process, um, and uh, not necessarily focus on the process issues about which the kids of Western Sydney care little. Um, the families when they're in simply want the chance to see the, the great institutional uh, benefits that museum has to offer, and hopefully the museums and galleries and theatres that will follow in its wake as this part of the city grows to more than 50% of the entire population of Greater Sydney. Thank you. Questions? Um, you know, um, so, Mr. Brown, what is your, um, what do, you, do you have a formal relationship with um, the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences? Uh, Arts and Sciences. What is your relationship with them? Well, I was chairing the alliance that um, has, brings together a range of community groups right across Greater Western Sydney to support that. Um, I'm also in my role. Um, well, she was been as an avid consumer of the uh, of the, the mass for some years through the observatory, particularly. I know I'm sitting on a bit of a stargazer, so um, wonderful and also um, not nearly enough, like most of Sydney, never enough to Piermont um, because it's too hard to get to. And thirdly, um, I'm also the chairman of the Western City Leadership Dialogue, um, and the mass only in recent times is also. Uh, organisation uh, with which I've been involved and in my previous role at Tourism and Transport Forum for many years, uh, back in the day, the uh, our house was also, I think, um, from memory serves me right as a partner at recognising its importance in the tourism framework of the city. So, w without revealing your, um, without revealing your location, um, so what part of Western Sydney are you um, giving evidence from now? <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not, I'm homesick. Oh, where, where, that's in, that's in the... On, on, not home, on a farm, um, so, uh, recuperating well, um, self-isolating, so as to not be accused of being a public health hazard. So are, are you based in Western Sydney? You're, are you in uh, the Western Sydney Powerhouse Museum Community Alliance, Alliance? Are you based in Western Sydney? Alliance is based in Western Sydney, are, yes. Based, um, are you based in Western Sydney? Based in, in which way? Residential, commercial. We're, we're, um, um, I can tell it's a it's sort of a uh, somewhat tricky sort of question, Walt. But uh, what specifically are you after? Well, just open up. Where, where do you live? Where where where, where do you where live? Do you, live? you um you um down, put your down in the, in the southern islands. Oh no no because I, I... Oh, okay. of, of the of the, of the uh, west just below Wallaby. 
No, 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 because because uh, because I've I've seen public comment from you uh, as a champion for Western Sydney, and I just wanted to just establish that you lived in Western Sydney. So we're going to open up on my Western Sydney credentials. That you think that's an appropriate use of taxpayers' time? Well, I'm happy to go there, my friend, but I expected a little more of you, to be honest. But let, let's go. Uh, whoa, 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 <laughs> Mr. Brown. Oh, I'm Mr. Sorry. Let's not let's go to no illusion. This committee is set up to try and deny the people, the majority, to try and deny the people of Western Sydney. Not untrue, Mr. Brown, and I would prefer that you refer order, to people order. by their titles. <laughs> order, order. No, and he may know. Okay, sorry, yeah. sorry, Mr. Order. Chair. Look, Mr. Brown, we prefer that you respond to questions rather than make speeches. Um, what your view in relation to what this committee's duty is or not? isn't directly relevant. What we'd like you to do is just answer the questions if you can, please. Oh. And, and we've done you the courtesy of giving you this chance to speak. We've, we've done you the courtesy of giving you this chance to speak. Right. Um, uh, did, did your committee support the destruction of the, um, the, the oldest licensed hotel in Australia? Um, one of the key parts of Parramatta's heritage fabric being the destruction of the Royal Oak Hotel. Your committee support that? I wasn't meant the Royal Hotel to try and help save the Royal Hotel. The committee didn't have a view. The Western Sydney leadership dialogue raised with government the need. Does that need to be a place? For me, it has even greater significance. It's also the place where the great Parramatta Royals convene for their yep. Mad Mondays normally. So that, that is, um, but your committee didn't have a position on that. Your leadership team didn't have a position on that. Yes, leadership team had a position on that. That we we believed we, we sought um, advice from transfer as to why that needed to happen. Was convinced there was no chance otherwise, despite my personal misgivings. And um, I believe it uh, and as part of the light rail uh, routing. Yeah, leadership team supported the destruction of the Royal Oak Hotel, didn't you? You supported the destruction of the Royal Oak Hotel, the, one of the oldest buildings in Parramatta and one of the longest standing, the longest standing continually licensed building, licensed pub in the country. Your leadership team supported the destruction of that. I grew up amid the history of Parramatta, growing up every day, going to Camelton Cottage, Elizabeth Farm, Experiment Farm, the Parramatta Jail, so eight years on the board of Magnificent University, housed in the female orphan school. I don't think I need to be lectured by inner city greens about heritage of Parramatta. Yeah, yeah if you could just answer the question, Mr. Brown, it might be helpful. <laughs> if you could just answer the question, it's Mr. Great Brown. Answer. You supported, your leadership team supported the destruction the of that critical <laughs> Parramatta heritage site. And now you support the destruction of Willow Grove. Oh, we we and now you support, again. and now you support, let me finish yeah. the question. I'll say for a let time, me finish sir, the question, we, Mr. We Brown. Made... It'll work out better this way. I'll let you finish your answer. You let me finish the question. Thank you. All right, I'll say for the mm -hmm. third time. Good. We first raised was concerned about that, raised that with government, um, yeah. about the, uh, the need so, for that to go down as part of the light rail stop. Yeah. So you're... Supported mm -hmm. a project. Yeah, your, lead your, your leadership, your Western Sydney leadership team supported the destruction of the Royal Oak Hotel. You now support the destruction of Willow Grove. Is any part of Parramatta's heritage, is any part of Parramatta's heritage um, valuable enough for you to put your hand up and try and save? As I, as I said, living amongst it all the time, not discovering it five minutes ago for you might look better from the city perspective, but actually being part of the history of Parramatta. My family has a history in Parramatta. Look, mate, I've worked in Parramatta for three point years. Point of order, Mr. Chair. I've worked point in of order, Mr. Chair. Chair. Point of I order, Mr. Chair. Chair. You can keep talking, order. David, but I'll make order. a point of order. 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 And that is that the, the witness actually allowed the question to be asked in silence on that occasion. And then uh, the witness is now trying to answer and then the member tries to cut in over the top of him. I think there's a challenge here because of obviously um, the, you know, the fact that we're, the, the format in which we're doing this question and answer. But I'd just ask Mr Chair if there could perhaps be a bit more restraint on both sides that there can be uh, a question and an answer without But each side please be a little bit more considerate in terms of the timing of their questioning and their answering. Well, I'll ask you again, Mr Brown, Absolutely. is there any part of Parramatta's heritage that you're willing to put a stake in the ground and say shouldn't be destroyed? There's every part of Parramatta's I've made a, a, a life and a career out of doing, um, including up to and most recently reaching out to Bruce Beresford over the weekend to join him in the fight for the Roxy Theatre, where I watched Star Wars in 1977 
came out on the steps and will fight to the end to the nth degree to say that as we're involved in the campaign for Lancer Barracks, as I've been involved in previously in years past in the campaign for experiment for, for a risk and fire for the federal orphanage orphans people for currently the working government the vote for five minutes trying to equate Willow Grove, a very modestly important heritage site with the truly great heritage, convict heritage and indigenous heritage of Western Sydney. That would be that would be one of the great acts of the political well. Yeah. Have you spoken to the Darug people about the Indigenous heritage there? Or is that just your assessment, your, your self-assessment from, from no, Wall and Dilly? I'm actually engaged with my Indigenous advisors. The, the, sorry, I'm always, I'm actually engaged with my trusted Indigenous advisors, the Darabin Local Aboriginal Land Council, the owners of the proudly under New South Wales legislation, the owner um, and guardians currently of the Indigenous people of Western Sydney, who are active members of this alliance. And I'm also working with them to try to get the spirit of the powerhouse to continue and establish the world's greatest Indigenous gallery and, and cultural centre in that uh, Parramatta jail that's on Darabin land or on other Darabin land. So uh, we have been actively engaged in, in our Indigenous consultation um, right from the beginning. Mr Borzak, could I ask some questions if Mr Shoebridge is finished? Please. Uh, thank you, Mr Brown. It's um, Rose Jackson here. Um, I Obviously, you Don't were you. pleased and excited <coughs> both personally and Obviously, the community lines didn't exist then, but you know, individuals involved in it when the government made this announcement way back in 2015, you were su supportive, excited at that time. We've just heard evidence um, from the minister and the, the new chair um, of the museum Bo board of trustees, Peter Collins, that that there's no time frame at all at this point. We they couldn't give us a sod turning date, they couldn't give us an opening date. Um, it's six years since that exciting time for you when this project was announced and we have no time frame at all about when this fantastic facility uh, will be opening in Western Sydney. Does that frustrate you? Does that concern you? You bet. <clears throat> it also frustrates me that three times we got a, a, a vote from government that the ANZ Stadium will be upgraded to nothing. It also frustrates me that we want a commitment from government to build Parramatta Light Rail through the Olympic Park. And it frustrates me. A lot of things frustrate me when I'm advocating <coughs> for Western Sydney. This project um, is frustrating how long it will take, but I think we all have to have some role in frustration. There has been an activist campaign by people in the city particularly. Um, those who even said to me early on, people whom I've great respect, what was the quote? Just give them an immigration museum. In other words, that's all the people of Western They're all migrants. Give them that. Don't let them have any of the high culture. Don't let them close to any of the real things we care about. Toss them at immigration museum. I'm frustrated that we're still having to have this argument with people who are denying Western Sydney the right to get this museum done. I'm frustrated about the process on government side. I'm <clears> frustrated <throat> about the politics on other sides. Let's all get on and give people Western Sydney what they deserve. I mean, yes, I, I, I can understand your concerns, although surely, Mr Brown, you would accept that people like the North, resident, uh, North Parramatta Residents Action Group, who have been key leaders in raising some of those concerns that, that you've articulated, it, it's really unfair to that group of people who actually do, who do live in and around Parramatta to, to dismissively describe them as inner city activists. They're local people who have I, raised I genuine not, concerns. Sorry, I certainly didn't describe them as that. I described them as um, Western Sydney activists. But when compared to the lineup, the looks we'll see in front of me, the list of people, the organisations that are part of this alliance, it is one small group backed by you know, some friends of the CFMEU. I can remember a time when unions cared about getting people a job. I know that's long past in <coughs> the CFMEU's days, but. The, the, the array of organisations in Western Sydney that are clamouring for this, that have stood up despite the opposition, despite the threats against them by the residents, despite the implied threats from the union, have turned up, fronted up uh, uh, groups across migrant communities, professional communities, educational groups, Indigenous groups. Please don't have us believe that one noisy group, the North, Action, the North Paramount Action Residents Group, equates to the incredible array of community groups speaking out in favour of our right to have this museum to tell our stories to our kids. 
I mean, on, on the content of the museum, because obviously the initial announcement was the relocation of the facility, the, the museums that's yeah. now in Ultimo, the government has reversed course on that and a num all, in fact, of the very large objects, the incredibly significant, incredibly interesting, incredibly historic objects that are at the Ultimo site will be staying at the Ultimo site. None of them are coming to Parramatta now. Um, when, when asked about what is going to be in the Parramatta facility, there's a lot of sort of language around, I'm try, I'll try and find them. That was three, um, three items, Rose. There are half a million items, so 499,997 items. Thank you, thank you. I'm asking questions to sure, Mr I'm Brown. I'm just helping you, for your information. Order. Um, my favourite description of the uh, Parramatta Powerhouse, the galactical spaces um, that will be out there. Uh, are you concerned that the, that the vision for a world-class facility in Parramatta with some of these very large significant objects that that's all sort of gone down the drain and that in fact you are now getting a second rate museum and the government doesn't have a particularly strong vision of what's actually going to be in the powerhouse facility beyond sort of words that don't really mean anything. <clears throat> we look forward to the curation of a museum that is not only academically and technically proficient uh, with great creativity. We also look for though to a magnificent public building. That goes to the very essence of why we're supportive of this project. We're trying to shape, uh, reshape the central city of Sydney, the great commitment from Olympic Park to Blacktown. We're trying to create the Western City, Western Parkland City of Sydney. Great cities deserve good buildings. They shouldn't all exist at Macquarie Street, the magnificent building in which you sit today. They shouldn't all exist there. They should be um, spread out. And if great cities want to take on greatness, they need that public building. So what houses it is magnificently important. What's inside it? I've got a the question. I hope we get every possible bit of greatness and content we can have when the building's finished. And then I hope we go and get a lot more, particularly some that reflect the Western Sydney house of the new museum. So if there's a chance to start over, we will be, we will be punching and fighting as hard as possible to get recurrent funding. I heard the question earlier of Lisa Havilar about recurrent funding. That's a challenge our alliance will take up to ensure there is enough money to get this project. A, a fight will take up to ensure we get a, a completion date confirmed and to ensure that this museum will be as magnificent as it can be. And then it's the first of a number of cultural institutions. We're coming for the rest of them as well. Long may he rest in, in peace to break Ed Capon, but his legendary resistance to set up an addicts in Parramatta was emblematic of way too much a view of the inner city about the people of Western City don't deserve to be trusted with the great cultural institutions that their hard work and taxes pay for. We will never allow that, that, that argument to roll and be unchallenged again. I mean, one of the, you know, parts of the, again, the original articulation <coughs> um, back in 2015 for moving, um, as it was then, the, Parama the Powerhouse Museum to Parramatta was that it would be part of a Cultural ribbon, I think, was the phrase then used, you know, linking to the Riverside Theatre and others. You know, are, are you concerned <clears throat> that, that there's been very little, if so none, no real movement on any part, any other part of that cultural ribbon at all? And in fact, the Riverside Theatre redevelopment project is seemingly at a complete standstill um, and that the government has allocated no funding, no additional investment in that project. Does that concern you? Is that something that you've been <clears throat> advocating on with government? Yes and yes, very concerned by it. I mentioned before the, um, the personal connection to the Roxy. Well, I can look with great pride that my father was Federal Minister, Member for Parramatta and Federal Minister for the Arts, paid for the Riverside Theatre as a um, bicentennial project in Parramatta. Um, I'm greatly concerned that while the commitment's been given by government, to fund the extension of the Riverside, we haven't actually seen anything happen yet. So that is something which we've raised. We raised it publicly with Ministers Harwin and um, uh, Lee last week in the presence of Chairman Collins, calling for not only for the funding for the Roxy and the Riverside to be made real, but also for the government to consider the funding of the Aboriginal uh, First Nations uh, Cultural Centre and Gallery in the, in the Parramatta Jail that we publicly announced last December. So, yes, frustrated by that, believe, but also frustrated it's not only Parramatta. Where's the funding for the, for the permanent Penrith Opera Arts Company? 
Where's, where's the movement by government to take camp, uh, the, 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 the um, Camels Out Arts Centre back under state control to fund it properly? I was proudly part of the Moore Bank in a motor board and we were able to save <coughs> the dual powerhouse, which was slated for destruction. So the uh, cultural debate in Western Sydney doesn't begin and end in Parramatta, but it's mm -hmm. the most important first step to allow that ribbon to thread not only through the streets of Parramatta, but flow right across the greater Western Sydney. Would, would you be prepared to uh, uh, let us know any of Minister Harwin or Minister Lee's response in your meeting to your advocacy on this point? Were any commitments given? Were you given any confidence by them that 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 element of this project, which, as I said, was, um, you know, at, at the very core of it from the very beginning, but has really dropped off. Um, were, were you given any confidence yep. that that was going to be re reinstated? I have to confirm the, the, the statement was read out by one of my team because this same bronchitis affliction had me not attend the meeting of the Alliance I was hosting. But I'm reliably informed Minister Harwin was quite excited about the concept of the Indigenous Gallery um, in the jail. I didn't have any specific feedback about the others. The government's well aware of our concerns about Riverside will continue to raise it. Uh, I've not had satisfactory response yet, other than there's been a commitment to fund it. Um, but I'm awaiting more detail. And only this weekend, again, with Bruce Beresford's support, the campaign for the Roxy will kick off again, trying to save that. Hopefully, as part of the um, development of the Parramatta Metro Station, government should be, in, be imposed upon to ensure that is saved, redeveloped and, and protected for the people of Parramatta and beyond. Yeah. Uh, Mr Brown, the Western Sydney Powerhouse Museum Community Alliance, which you chair, who actually is in that alliance? Can you outline those? Sure. The Camel Town Arts Centre, the Cashula Powerhouse Arts Centre, the Catholic Diocese of Parramatta, Coleman and Greg Lawyers, the Committee for Sydney, the Derriban Local Aboriginal Land Council, Form Dance Projects, Gandhi Creations, Greater Western Sydney Giants, Lee Tanoi, Belfresh the Lion, one of the great cultural exports of Campbelltown, Museums and Galleries of New South Wales, the Nighttime Industry Association, New South Wales Council of Pacific Communities, Owens and Creative Consulting, Pacific Sport and Entrepreneurs, Parramatta Reels, um, St John's Anglican Cathedral in Parramatta, the Sydney Festival, the Westwood Institute for Medical Research, the Great Research Foundation, the University of Sydney, the Western Sydney Business Chamber, the Western Sydney Business Connection, the Western Sydney Community Forum, the Western Sydney Leadership Dialogue, Western Sydney University, the Wanderers, and Western Sydney Women in Business. That's a comprehensive list of people, certainly. Um, what's, what's uh, well, uh, of organisations at least, anyway, but uh, um, the, um, what's your view in relation to the Willow Grove, Willow Grove building and its curtilage? What, how should it be treated from a Western Sydney and indeed Parramatta point of view? I think if it can be saved and moved, then that would be good. <clears throat> but it would be hypocritical of me if I were to say this is a thing of, of the most significant it's top heritage significance in Parramatta. It quite simply isn't. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, I think, Peter Collins called an attractive building, the terraces they are. But I would hope all heritage in Parramatta can be saved and we're being levelled for a car park. I say the McDonald's I used to work in Parramatta was shifted for car park. That heritage, not quite as much as this. Um, but were we, I, I also lived at a time, I grew up next to the King's School. I didn't like it much. I was at Burnside Primary one side and Cumberland High School the other. But the King's School sat amidst me and uh, that was another building. Our cathedral was moved brick by brick from the old King's School site to North Parramatta some years ago, uh, a la Linden Cottage within the Lancer Barracks. I trust in the science that I'm reliably informed Relocation can happen well. It would make an ideal part of the heritage precinct and North Parramatta amongst the other heritage gems of, of, of the region. And um, I support that being moved if possible. Um, but if push comes to shove, the, the cultural imperative of the museum, in my personal opinion, overrules the cultural imperative of Willow Grove. It was never one of the buildings I used to visit as a kid. It had never been raised by anybody I ever know of. I didn't know it was there until this came up. Um, and uh, so its relative importance is, is important here. Well, look, the fact, I mean, we heard the similar evidence from Mr Collins earlier, the fact that it wasn't raised uh, until this came up doesn't detract necessarily from its heritage value. Um, usually that's when these things do come up for discussion. Um, but how do you deal with the, the Darug peoples that have got a direct connection to that land, to that land upon which that building stands? 
I'm informed by the Durban Local Aboriginal Land Council that we're fully supportive of this move. Um, I don't claim to be an Aboriginal land anthropological expert. Um, I struggle sometimes to understand who in Durham is Durham. Um, I do know who is in Durban, uh, with whom we have a close relationship and a, enormous respect for, as they are the guardians currently of Indigenous people of Western Sydney under the very proud New South Wales Aboriginal Land Rights Act. And I'm dutifully informed by them that uh, they're comfortable with the process, that the benefits that will flow at the museum there, the potential it allows for remarkable um, uh, articulation of First Nations heritage of the region in a new powerhouse, um, gives me comfort that uh, uh, this is an appropriate move. So what are you suggesting, that uh, one group of Darug people have done a deal uh, to get a museum which is not yet funded, uh, should offset the, the rights and privileges and perhaps opinions of other Darug people who believe that they do have a linkage to that land? Is that what you're saying? In other words, the government what should be quite happy to buy them off? What I said actually was, in my view, understanding the benefit that could come from an articulation of First Nations Heritage in Parramatta within this new museum would outweigh uh, the Indigenous heritage claimed on the site uh, and that my dealings with Derriban, with whom I entrust as my uh, advisors in local Indigenous actions in the region, um, were, were comforted in that and I follow. I don't believe in disputing when I'm, it's put to me by Aboriginal elders, such as the Derriban uh, uh, Land Council that um, I know well, that I should doubt that. How far, how far advanced is the proposal for a Derriban museum at the old jail site? We, we've held discussions with Darabin um, about that. We put it to the minister. We launched a campaign in, in November, December last year. Uh, I've had very, very early discussions with the Ministry of Arts. I'm going down to brief the federal department on Thursday this week in Canberra um, to raise our discussions about whether there can be federal funding and what will not be an election year. Uh, considered to, as an act of reconciliation and cultural investment in Western Sydney to consider that site or other sites in Western Sydney for the development of what Australia has long lacked, a globally standard Indigenous art gallery and cultural centre. So there is no yet commitment from government, either state or federal, to fund such a, uh, such a uh, institution? I saw as an advocate, but I only, only, only raised the issue in December, so uh, there's a bit of, bit of time <coughs> yet we're considering investments of hundreds of millions of public money. And I, I'm sure they, they and we all would appreciate that advocacy, but the reality, of course, is that nothing has actually happened yet other than advocacy, no, which is good. To get our first museum. <laughs> I'm still trying to advocate to get my first museum in Parramatta, bring that for a second one. And with your help, I'm sure I'll bring that, be able to bring that. We, we've been trying to help for ages, but the government doesn't want to listen. <laughs> and one of our key recommendations from the last committee was that a par Parramatta powerhouse museum should be built in Parramatta. That was one of the key recommendations that was there. So we're very much in furious agreement with you. Any more questions? Yes, thanks. Uh, Chair, uh, Ben Franklin, um, uh, I just want to ask a few questions about your background first, if I may, Mr Brown. Um, uh, were you pro-Chancellor of Western Sydney University? Very briefly, I had that honour, but I was an eight-year uh, trustee of the organisation uh, and director. I was pro-Chancellor towards the end of my role and I uh, had the great honour of being given honorary doctorate from the said university. When you were a kid from Western City with no degree, it meant a lot to get an honorary doctorate from Western City Uni. Understood. Um, did you chair the Western Sydney Rail Alliance? I did indeed. Were you the founding convener of the Parramatta Partnership Forum and the Committee for Liverpool? I was, and also the convener of Advanced Blacktown. Um, do you now manage the Canterbury Banks Bankstown Forum and Advanced Blacktown Civic Leadership Forums? Advanced Blacktown, yes, Canterbury no longer it's, uh, that it wound up at the end of last year. Uh -huh. I, I, I did have that role, you're right. Um, do you chair the South West Sydney Local Health Advisory Board? I do. Um, and were you an advisor to the Western Sydney Parklands? I was, and I'm also chair, independent chair of the Campbelltown Health Education Precinct Collaboration Group. And you were raised and educated in Parramatta itself? 
Burnside Primary and Cumberland High, the home of the School of the Great Red Cross. Mr Brown, I can't think of a more appropriate person to speak on behalf of the people <laughs> of Western Sydney <laughs> and matter than your good self. In fact, to me, you could almost be uniquely placed in terms of your experience. Uh, and that goes to the heart of my question. Why do you believe uh, that the people of Western Sydney, more generally, and the people of Parramatta specifically, want the powerhouse museum um, development uh, that the government is proposing in Parramatta? Because they have been denied their fair share of cultural funding for over 200 years. They are a proud community um, that is now the second largest, uh, second, officially designated the second CBD of Greater Sydney because um, they have young kids who, who, who look to the stars and dream of a better life, who dream of the wonder, wonderment of technology, of, of right culture, it shouldn't be denied access or, or constantly suffer the tyranny of distance to schlep into the inner city to go to the art gallery, to go to the great museums, to go to the, the great the, the state library. It's about time Sydney shared, shared its cultural benefits, shared its largesse. It's not good enough for the branch office to simply pay the pay their fees when the sheriff of Nottingham comes around and collect it so often the taxes. For all of the, of the good, the good stuff to stay here, the the, uh, the, the the cultural facilities to be hoarded within one LGA. It's about time people of Western City got their fair share, and the powerhouse is not a bell and end all, but it's a damn good start. It followed actually my last credential, the start that came with the Riverside Theatre, the family connection back there, and, and the original Parramatta Stadium mm -hmm. way back in the 80s. It's been a long time between drinks for Western City. Your um your words are convincing and compelling, but how do you know that the people of Western Sydney share those views? How do you know that you are speaking for the people of Western Sydney? How can we be assured that this is not just you going off on um, your own quixotic venture, but rather you actually speak for the people? I wouldn't be so uh, arrogant I speak for every person in Western Sydney. I can tell you I speak for those collection of organisations I mentioned before. I can tell you I speak for the partners of the West City Leadership Dialogue. I can tell you I speak for all of those who, who've been in positively giving comments at the powerhouse information booth. Um, I know I don't speak for them, I'm sure um, Susan Mead doesn't believe I speak for her. I'm not that arrogant. I can simply speak for me and those who've asked me to speak on their behalf, and they're unambiguous. We want our powerhouse. We wanted it ages ago. We wanted it as soon as possible. We want it to be brilliant. We want a great public building. We want it to be, have an operating budget. And we want the rest of Sydney and the world to come and enjoy it when we host it proudly in Parramatta Region. Thanks very much, Mr Brown. Thank you. Um, the Western Sydney Leadership Dialogue was founded by Mr Christopher Brown. Thank you very much for doing that. But it was launched by Mike Baird, the very man that launched this uh, powerhouse concept. So obviously they're on the same page at that time. And uh, I think uh, the patrons, Mr Greiner, Mr Klein, Craig Knowles, Dr Kerry Schott, uh, and Peter Shergold, of course, are all on the same page. And we all want to see great things for Western Sydney. But what we don't want to see is uh, these things being rammed through in a way that uh, um, not everybody in Western Sydney can agree on. Western Sydney does deserve more, we agree with that, and that's why we made the recommendations we did. Any more questions? Yeah, just for the point of, point of uh, accuracy, in recent times, both uh, Messrs Greiner and Knowles, who've taken up posts as, as uh, uh, Consul General in some of the parts of the world, have been replaced by Lucy Turnbull, and Mike Murdoch, the former Secretary of the Federal Department of Infrastructure and the Arts. So, just but yes, thank you. Thank you for the support of the committee. Thank you for keeping government honest as always. Thank you for your service. It's, it, it is a thankless task, Mr Brown. But we, we, <laughs> we are working on it. Thanks very much. We'll now um, um, we'll finish up at that what point and uh, stop patting ourselves on the back and uh, <laughs> we'll come back at um, 1.30 after lunch.